Sunday and here we are going live. We've had a couple technical difficulties so far, so hopefully that doesn't continue. Sometimes technology is just not your friend. All right, so we're in a new location. Hello. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> we're in a new location today. We are now in the Keys. The Keys. We're at Key West. Key West. So we just got here yesterday yep. afternoon. Yep. So that was a long day of driving. We got here around 3.30. We are loving the Keys so far. Yep. So it's the island feel, very laid back. Yeah, we took a tour of the base this morning and checked it out. And took some clips for a, a feature video. So check it out. Did we? <laughs> I did. Did you? No, I didn't. <laughs> I'm just in Key West. Oh, okay. So, anyway. So today we're just enjoying the breeze and not doing much. And just hanging out. Hanging out. So what else is going on? <clears throat> oh, I think the fans have some questions. I have like three pages of questions, questions. from everybody. So, is that what you want to just dive into? I mean, the weather is beautiful, but the weather in the camper is a, is a, is a medium 75 degrees. <laughs> All right. So we'll just dive into your questions and uh, hopefully get some of those answered for you. All right. So a lot of people have been talking a lot, first off, about the ethics videos that came out this week. And there's tons of questions on that. Everybody wants to know a lot of different things, and then people want to know about the Otter Creek meeting and, you know, about our adventures, where we're going, what is happening. I know people were talking a lot about the how at the unmeeting we were having a tailgate party, <laughs> tailgate party. and it was a lot of fun, and yeah. a lot of people were talking about my annoying microphone, <laughs> so I'm surprised <laughs> nobody took it away from me. Because it did become a little annoying, but <laughs> it's fun to play with. It's, it's fun, to so play fun to play with, to. <laughs> but not so fun to listen to. Yeah, so <laughs> even I knew it was annoying at times, but nobody took it away from me. Which <laughs> next time, hopefully, someone does for y'all's sake. Um, so anyway, we'll start with um, our first question. So a lot of people are asking who we think put John up to the ethics complaint, who we think is behind it, and again, all these are just opinions. So in my opinion, I believe that Russell put John up to it because he wanted to get me out of the position as mayor. He definitely did not like me in there at all. He doesn't want people uncovering all the things in that office, which I assume is why he hauled off a truckload of paperwork mm -hmm. so that people wouldn't know what he was really up to in there. Right. So I believe he didn't want me in there, so I think he had part of that. I'm sure Lynette also helped him with that, and mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if the Jokalist helped them as well, since she likes to have her hands in everything. <clears throat> so, and someone also want to know, do I have evidence that Russell is one of the people behind it? No, I don't have any evidence about any of that um it's just my opinion it's a educated guess and i would think that that's a very good guess because he showed us in his activities what he didn't want anybody knowing so that's why he tried covering things up if you check people's behaviors they tell you a lot of the story just with their behaviors mm -hmm. and he definitely has a lot of sus behavior um do you have anything you'd like to say about who you think it is, or if you agree or disagree? I agree. I think um, that's kind of Russ's M.O. He, he does not like to confront people, contrary to what you've seen in some of his meetings. When he's in power, he likes to blow his chest up, but behind the scenes, he's kind of a coward. He's a small guy in stature. He's just got a big mouth, and so he likes to, he likes to manipulate behind the scenes, he likes to call favors in. He likes to do things just like this. Hey, John, why don't you do an ethics complaint? Oh, okay. How do I do that? Well, that you whole know, John group of people not know is not that. interested in doing the right thing. That is for sure. Right. Because if any of them were, 
none of this would be an issue right. and Otter Creek would be a beautiful little town. Mm -hmm. So um, another question people wanted to know is what do we think it will take to stop John and Lynette? I don't know, to be honest. <clears throat> I think you would they think either by need to now, be arrested or they need to move away and give up on it. Yeah, I mean, they absolutely need some serious consequences happening for their behaviors. Right now, they're feeling very puffed up because nothing has happened to them. Yeah, Same as Russell. Yeah. The more nothing happens to you, the more puffed up you will feel. You're empowering those people to continue right. their behavior if you don't put it, you know, nip it in the bud. So, I think um, absolutely... They need to start having to pay for some of the things that they've done wrong. And until then, nothing's going to change. Yeah. So I'd like to be able to have better answers about that. But unfortunately, I'm not the one in power dealing with the legal side and the law. Mm -hmm. the, and if you have corrupt people in charge, the right things aren't going to get done there either. Right. So hopefully in the future that changes. And then a lot of people also wanted to know if we have plans to sue John Cook for his false allegations. Well, before we would really consider doing that, we would like for there to be some... Um, what's the word I'm thinking of? A better judge? Yeah, I mean, there needs, we need to be fairly well convinced that the law is going to do something about it. There needs to be some enforcement. Right. And I mean, you could spend your a lot of money on lawyers, but if you have the wrong powers that be, what good is it going to do you? Yeah. So there's a lot of things that need to change, but it's definitely something that could very well happen in the future. Who knows? Yeah. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't, I don't personally worry about John and Lynette's... Um, accusations too much because I don't think anybody's believing them. They have so much about them that is being aired about them that I don't know why we should use our money to chase to chase that rabbit well, down the I don't because, I don't give them any merit. I yeah, mean nobody's to me at the end merit. of the day God sees everything and he knows what's really going on and That's he's right. the one who everyone has to answer to for their behaviors and what they're doing and saying so and what they're doing with the hails is very is very p pinpointed very specific very malicious very so i definitely understand his grievance yeah they're sad evil um, people and yeah. apparently they've been doing this to people in a cycle all along so thanks karen <laughs> nice chicken you got there you like it does he make sound effects sometimes he does go that's more like a bird, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I gotta, have to, gotta work on my chicken. Gotta start, get your cluck in order. Get my cluck in order. Okay, and um, someone else wanted to know, should John Cook have to reimburse the state for these false allegations? Again, in my opinion, I absolutely think he should. I think it's terrible that the state wastes so much money on people's false allegations. I was honestly shocked that it went as far as it did in the first place. It was completely <laughs> insane to me. People like the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you get that chicken? This was a gift. Came from George. <laughs> well, that's pretty nice. George is sharing her chickens with you. <laughs> Thanks, Harry. You better get clucking. <laughs> Cluck, cluck, cluck. Cluck, cluck, cluck. And then they wanted to know, do you think there should be an initial fee for someone to have to file a complaint? I personally, again, yeah. do believe that there should be some kind of fee, and that would probably deter... The frivolous stuff. ...that people doing false allegations. I think there should be a hundred... Let's say there's a hundred dollar or five hundred dollar submission fee, and if they substantiate the allegations, then you get it back. But if they don't, then you lose that money and it goes... I mean, there needs to be something. Right. And I, I think, think that, that would, would definitely dissuade. help. Thanks, Jasper. With everything. You going to try for a cluck? <laughs> and make your yeah. chicken dance. I can do mooses and cows. I can do chickens. <laughs> well, you can work on that. <laughs> and um, another thing that I thought was funny, too, with that question about whether John should 
have to reimburse the state was according to one of the false posts from Lynette way back when, when she was accusing people of falsely reporting her to CPS. She sure put in her post that people should have to be fined or prosecuted for those false allegations. So according yeah. to her, yeah. John should have to be fined and prosecuted for that. It's fair for the goose. So it's fair for the gander. I guess we'll go with her, her answer on that. So, <laughs> and then another question. Oh, buck, 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 buck. There buck, you buck. go. Like that. Buck, 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 buck. Yeah, you could do that. You buck, could. buck, buck, buck. There, you're getting better. Okay. Now you're going to start jerking your head a little bit. Look out. Okay. Buck, buck. Don't eat my head. <laughs> People want to know, where do you park your trailer in Otter Creek? Oh, where do we park our trailer? Oh, that might be private information. Yeah, is that a backside question there, John? No, um, <laughs> I actually have family in the Chiefland area, and we park it on their property. All right. Get your chicken. Thanks, Gate Smasher. Oh, are your chicken Bye -bye. even talks? <laughs> Sometimes. Wow. <laughs> That's a trained chicken. Another person wanted to know where we got our pirate duck um, because they have a very mm -hmm. good eye and they wanted to know if Deanna had given us that pirate duck because they had seen it in a video oh. from a storage unit. That is a and good eye. <laughs> they have a very good eye and Jeremy gave us the big daddy pirate duck to add to our collection. That is the daddy duck who watches all of the other ducks when they're out of line. So. Thanks, Jasper. Quack, quack. Uh -huh. Thanks, Chance. <laughs> um, so, he keeps them all in line, and that did come from <clears throat> Jeremy, so good eye on Thanks, that. Thanks, Jason. Another question everybody's been dying to know is, did anyone find out who the guy on the motorcycle was at the non-meeting? There's been some banter about that. A lot of people. I have no idea. A lot of people are claiming to be that guy. I know I've heard yeah. some different things on who people think it is, and I different was people claiming. Him. I was keeping an eye on him, but, but he was he was pretty much staying to himself over there. Yeah, I mean, he didn't go out of his way to make yeah. any kind of threats to anybody. But yeah, I can so tell you, know. I've seen that person before at other meetings. Yes, I have. At too. least one of them. And I've I've seen that motorcycle drive through the town before. I have too. So, and they've never said anything to anybody in yeah. any kind of way. So Thanks, I don't Mike. think that I didn't feel threatened by them. But I mean, they could have come up and said hi. Yeah, that I would mean, have been we nice. We don't but... know which side of things they're on, but right. Um, but I was just keeping an eye on. But he seemed to be behaving himself. A lot of people in the chat are saying it was DJ Radis. Oh, so we well, should come up and said hi. I guess y'all know. So, <laughs> thanks, Marcus. Wow, thank you. If it was him, you know, next time wave hi. Yeah. <laughs> um. So then a lot of people also want to know if sus will be removed now from the board. And that's been a lot of question why he's still there. Has he been removed because he didn't run in the next election? Well, his time on the board ends actually April, April. would be the end for him. Yeah. So he did not run for the next election. So he... April should be his last meeting where he hands over his seat to somebody else. Yeah. So at that meeting, he should be sitting in the seat at the beginning of the meeting and then getting up to give that seat to somebody else. He has not been removed before that. I know a lot of people are saying he should have been removed before that because of his behaviors and the things mm -hmm. he was doing wrong. Well, well the only person that's why you assigned him the one year seat and that's stuck. The only um, person that could remove a board member from their seat before that is the governor. Yeah. So and I know a lot of people say if you miss two meetings you're supposed to be removed. Again, the governor the would governor have to make to that call meeting, and yeah. come in and do it. I know a lot of the other towns, Chiefland, I'm not sure about Bronson, but a lot of them actually <laughs> That's my mayor. That's my mayor. <laughs> hey, guys. I love that video. Hey, guys. 
Um, so a lot of them actually have in their ordinances where they address malfeasance and people's behaviors and they have it all spelled out. But as everybody knows, the town of Otter Creek's ordinances are very old. They're very out of date. They need to be rewrote. You know, in some cases, that kind of vague stuff is great, but in a lot of cases, it being vague and out of date is not going to help the town. Yeah. So if they would revamp the ordinances, they could definitely put in their more definitive laws about board members' behavior so that it holds them accountable. Because when they have that all written in there and people are doing things they shouldn't be doing, it can get voted on and the members can re be removed based on that. But town of otter creek has a long way to go really what um what madam mayor was was wanting to get done she didn't really get a chance to get done because it was more of a uh had to hurry up and, yeah, and there was discover too, what the mess was there was too much fighting too much fire, and there was way fighting. too much of a mess so and we didn't have the attorney yet and so now that you have the attorney going forward i think the new board should definitely be putting a yes. higher priority on getting new ordinances written and getting Updating all those online and getting this stuff online so they can take action so there can be some enforcement code enforcement law enforcement thanks sarah um another thing hi expert if you're in the chat how you doing somebody was asking if you bought property in otter creek that has a house on it are you allowed to have your own trailer on it and that answer is, of course, you're allowed to have an RV on the property. It's a parking yes. space. You cannot live in that RV as well as right. your house. You can live there for a certain time period. And I'm not going to quote what that time period is because I don't want to misquote that. But it's certainly not as long as Lynette and John have been living in theirs. Oh, no. So you can live in there while you're building a house. Right but you cannot have multiple ones on there you cannot have a bunch of different people living in there you can only live in there while you're building your place now remember that's septic because it's all based on the septic it's not really about the power pole as much as it is about the septic system right the septic is designed and sized to the number of bedrooms in the house you plan to build right not so a bunch of rvs trailers, sitting everywhere you're adding bedrooms you add a trailer you're adding another bedroom you add a trailer you're adding another bedroom and so now you're overburdening the system. Right. So That's they why. actually have gone past the time limit yep. of what you're supposed to have while building your house. Right. And now not only that, but they have Thanks, a whole nother person living in the RV. So now right. they have two RVs on the property with different people living in them whether it be themselves or the new rv is a whole nother person and by the way that's not even the only property in otter creek that has that going on there is another one that everybody calls the drug house Excellent. that has several rvs on it as well yeah. and i'm pretty sure if I'm not mistaken, one of those RVs is actually sitting on the Strong's property. Thanks, Webb. So I'm completely confused of why the Strong's have no problem with that. There's a lot of things going on that's childish, where, uh, like, they have problems with Zim building his RV park for some unknown reason. They have this tiny little triangle of property that cuts into Zim's property. I know Zim offered them a huge amount of money yeah. for this property that nobody in their right mind would have turned down have because it's that. an unusable little piece of land. They should have been happy to have been offered this extremely generous offer and they turned it down. It just seems that there must be something more to the story on their end. Yeah, they definitely should have sold it to him. Just being a good neighbor, I would have probably just let it go for 10 grand. Say, hey, you know what? It means more to you than it does yeah. us. And that's also another question I've been asked by many people is why Russell and Stewart and Laura Mott and the Strongs and Fuller, why do they hate Zim so much? And yeah. the only answer I have for that is jealousy. They are jealous 
that he is doing something. So they, instead of cheering him on and wanting the town to thrive and good things to be happening, they're just jealous. Thanks, John. And that's terrible. So I, I cheer people on. I think it's great what Zim is doing. He's adding something very nice to the town. So it's just shameful. And that's the only reason that I can come up with of why they don't like him because nothing else there is no other thing that has happened yeah so i can't tell you anything more about that and they certainly don't offer any insight into it either it's yeah. just to act like a bunch of little jealous children yeah. so another question someone asked is if i've always had bangs um no <laughs> i have not always had bangs at one time I had my hair all the same length. I've had really short hair where it was about up to here. I think that was about nine years ago, maybe. It's the chicken <laughs> grooming my bangs. <laughs> That's awesome. So I have had, but this is the longest my hair has been in a long time. I like the bangs. Do you? I don't think you've ever seen me without bangs. <laughs> so, but... <laughs> You know, I don't like cutting them, though. you got all that hair in your eyeballs. I don't like <clears> cutting <throat> my own hair. I used to have a really great hairdresser in Ocala when I lived in there. She, her name is Sarah Rose. So if anybody is in Ocala, look up Sarah Rose. She's the best hair lady there is. And she's... A lot of people in the chat are talking about <clears throat> the jealous haters. Other people have, and they want what they have. Right. But why don't these same jealous haters go get their own money there's plenty of money in right. the world they can go they can do a youtube channel no, they just want it to they fall can, in their lap it just yeah, comes out of the sky they don't want to work for it yeah find what your skill set is and then exploit your skill set i guess it's easier to hate everybody else than to actually do it but at the end of the day you still don't have it so what did yeah, that hate get you <laughs> you I have to know. get out there and do some work some people that's, are saying they're just too lazy and that's a big part of it yeah yeah, lazy people do want it handed it to them, and then when they don't get that, they just cause you know, ruckus and havoc for everybody else. And you know, if you're doing something that you love, it's not work. Right. It's a hobby, and True. it's fun, and you become very good at it, and then you can become wealthy doing it. Right. So, and a lot of people also don't even see what this person's gone through their whole life. Right. They have worked hard their whole life to get where they're at. They didn't just wake up one day and... Right. Money was falling out of the sky in their lap. They worked hard. So why shouldn't they enjoy what they've worked so hard for? Right. So, I don't know. People are just jealous haters. Mm. And it's just sad. People need to get a life and get out there and work. So another question is, everybody wants to know if we found out why the meeting was canceled. No, I haven't heard anything yeah. else about the, why the meeting was canceled, but to be fair, we've been traveling and we're on the road, so I haven't been in Otter Creek, and... You don't spend much time in town. Contrary to what people <laughs> believe, we're not on the phone with each other all the time, so everybody thinks we have this big phone game and we have all these big meetings with each other, and, you know, that's not true, and I don't yeah. spend any time in town hall anymore, so... I don't have people on speed dial giving me all the <laughs> dirt. So, and another question a lot of people have been asking is if Belinda resigned and they thought that she resigned and that's why the meeting was canceled. And no, Belinda has not resigned. She is still that. the clerk. Um, I'm pretty sure I would have heard that if that happened. But no, Belinda's still there and God bless her because she deals with a lot of things she shouldn't have to deal with she does a lot of work there and she always has a smile on her face and um oh thank you <laughs> the expert loves mr potato head ah. he's our little sidekick over here <laughs> so um it's just it's again shameful what belinda puts up with but she's so yeah. gracious and um i wish i could be as graceful as she is you know yeah. I, I love her very much she's a beautiful person and um the town loses her they're really going to be losing something yeah she is i don't know who would fill her shoes we couldn't find someone they to couldn't help find her. somebody before that right. that's why they had mary mary was 
Um, as Mary even stated in her own email, she didn't know what she was doing and all they cared about was having somebody with a pulse. So those are all things Mary said about her herself. So I'm not being rude to her. That was her description of herself. Mm -hmm. So that's what they had before because they couldn't find anybody. And when they could find somebody better, they didn't want that person being in the office. I had put in for Clark too, and they did not want me to be in there. They did not want me to see the files of what's been happening, and they wanted to keep playing games with everybody. So when given the opportunity, they also did not Thanks, um, Fred. take advantage. So outside of Belinda, I don't know who they would put in there now. So that would be not a good thing to see. And so a lot of people still are a little confused on the whole election and why there isn't one. I know a lot of people were talking about this post that was put in at Herschel's about how we took the election away from everybody and the town was is not given the option to speak up for who they want which I don't know who writes these things. Sometimes I think certain people hang these signs up just to give themselves some video material. So yeah. I guess the person who made a video out of it maybe <clears throat> was trying to give himself material and hung it there. My opinion again. Um, but no election was taken from anybody. People qualified for the election. They put in to qualify for the election. And they were assigned... They were assigned those seats based on nobody running opposing them. There was Stuart Stewart. He was running, and that's why there was still an election. Now, again, with the two one-year term seats, Joseph and Carl were the only people who put in for those seats. Right. So they were running unopposed. So there is no election for those two seats. They were right. automatically... Put into that, nobody's running against them. That's the way those things work. Now, there was still an election going on for the two two-year seats. And three people had put in for that. Laura Mott, Don Severino, and Stuart Stewart. Mm -hmm. Well, after that last meeting where Don and Russell walked out, Stuart Stewart tried to change his stuff to the one-year seat. And Thanks, that's, Poupon. <laughs> that's really not how that works either. Once it's already in for the qualifying and the qualifying is closed, it's all locked in there. So you can't just change what you're doing. So he got mad and walked out. Then he pulled his name out of running, leaving only Dawn and um, Laura. So And he left those two in there because I'm sure he was told, okay, well, let's play this game. Because... As you can see, there's puppets and there's a puppet master. Everybody mm -hmm. knows that. Everybody's been commenting on that. There's a lot of smart people out there watching things. And you can see clearly what is going on. So somebody said, hey, pull your name out. Then we have nobody running unopposed. And it's locked in. So they actually ended the election right. when Stuart pulled out. Right. So that means that Don and Laura will get seated in April, should be April. Should be April, unless some charter, more games are played. The charter states that those positions actually change hands after the election in May. But since there is, there no, is election. no election now, they can be seated in April. Yeah, there's no election, and that is <clears throat> of their doing That's by pulling doing. out of Stuart Stewart. So nobody took the election away from anybody. I hope that clears it up for everybody. Um, I don't know any other way to explain that that would yeah. make any sense to you, but that's why there is no election. Right. So, um, also someone had asked, switching gears for a second. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Um, switching gears for a second, they wanted to know if you could live year-round in Keystone Heights RV Resort. And yes. yes, a matter of fact, it's Most a better deal if you do live there yeah. year-round. Thank you, Wendy. Because they offer discounts for the longer you're there. So I think they had different prices for three months, six months, and so on. And the annual one was the cheapest. I think that one was 
somewhere between seven and eight hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. But you sign an annual contract to yeah. be there. So many of them leave their trailers there and go back north. Right, because they figured it was cheaper to do it that way. It's a great place. They had a lot of things to do, and everybody was so nice there. Yeah, they were. So we place. really enjoyed that place. And if I was looking for somewhere to lock it down year round, I would definitely look into that place. We are not mm -hmm. looking to lock anything down for a year. Yeah, we want to travel for a while. For this is a travel a channel, so. Yeah. <laughs> so another question people had is if Stuart Stewart has been on the board before. Thank you, Linda. And yes, he has been on the board before. You, he was actually vice mayor at one point recently. I think yeah. that was the last term before I came in. Yeah. Because he, there was a meeting that Russell had missed. And that was when Don actually had wanted to put me in on a vacant seat. That's when Don liked me. So as many of you don't know, before being on the board during this term, there was vacant seats or a vacant seat and the clerk position as well. Well, Don actually had come to me and asked me if I would be on the board. Mm -hmm. He asked me if I would be a clerk. He wanted me on there. Right. So, and at that time, him and Russell did not get along, and during the meetings, they were always going at each other. Then all of a sudden, I get on the board, and now he's fighting with me. Yeah. But then when the camera's off, after the meeting, he tells me, you're doing a great job. So, I'm completely confused by his behaviors. Mm -hmm. I do believe that, again, he may possibly have some dementia going on. I'm not a doctor. That, again, is my opinion, just based on several of the different things I've seen with him. So, do I do not personally think he is fit to be on the board. And that is my opinion also. I know mm -hmm. a lot of people talk about our nation and how different people are not fit to be our president or senators or governors or different things like that, that there should be some kind of competency testing for them well i think that should be done on lower levels as well yeah. and based upon the things i've seen i don't believe he should be on the board so it's it's a lot to deal with when you don't have people that are there for the right reasons and wanting the town to go further and it's a bunch of fighting you see other towns their meetings are so good because the people are reading their packets, they're coming there prepared, right. they want their town to move forward, they want good things for their town, so they're there for the right reasons. And to be on a board with those type of people would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. When you're going in there and you're having to fight with people and it's just like a big waste of time, it's very frustrating. Yeah. So that was a hard part of that job. Um, another person had asked, and I know we've talked about this before, but for new people coming in, they don't know. So we'll just talk about that. They want to know why you cannot combine the town hall with the community center. Why does it need to be on a new piece of property? And for the grant money, when you have grant money, there's very specific things listed that you can use the money for. And for this particular grant money, it's money that was left over and you could only use it in a way that was for sidewalks or for the community center and you cannot mix those the community center and the town hall cannot be mixed within the same building it's unfortunate because i think that's a great idea because with what little use the community center is going to get right it would be it because would as a then you hall. don't have to maintain two different buildings right. so it would make it a lot more feasible for the town right. But unfortunately, the way the different details are stated with what you can do with grant money, they spell it out yeah. and they do not allow you to combine the town hall with the community center. But yeah. it would definitely be a good idea. It would be. We, we even yeah. asked about yeah, it I asked about because it. we thought that would be the best use. Okay, you know, because to have a community center, it's not like we were against the thought of having a community center. But what you're against is the feasibility money-wise. Can the town keep paying for all that? And I voted against it because in 
my opinion, that's something that's going to, in the future, bankrupt the town. Because you're spending money on something that you can't keep up with. You were the only one that voted to give the money back. I was the back. only one that voted to give it back. Because I know the way everybody looks at it, hey, it's free money, we can't turn down free money. But, in my opinion, if you're not going to be using it for the right things, there's another town that could be. So if you yeah. sent the money back into the pot for Florida, another town It'll could be using else. it somewhere yeah. else for the right thing. So that's the way I look at it. I try to look at things in a big picture because yep. you want to see everything you that's going to happen. A good steward of the funds now, good in the future, not just for yourself, just but the you. other people on the planet. You know, you got to think of everybody. Not just yourselves. You mean we can't just go through life with blinders on like this? No, and I'm sorry, but there's also no such thing as free money. <laughs> there's always no something attached to it. Nothing is free. And there's many slogans about that, <laughs> but we won't get into those right now. Um, so another question that people were asking is... Oh, now that we're doing lives on Sunday, does that mean there's going to be no more lives on Tuesday for the town hall meetings? And that's completely separate and has nothing to do with our schedule. Right. So as long as we are in town, we will absolutely be at the meetings filming lives and we will always let you know ahead of time. Now, this summer we are planning on going to Alaska Right. So we will not be around, so we will not be at those meetings. But that doesn't mean that we won't have somebody else there filming. Yeah. So we'll see about that. Yeah. We're looking to see if somebody else will be filming for us. So we'll have to get back to you on that. <clears throat> Brett's chicken says to eat more bacon. <laughs> I don't, I don't bacon. disagree. <laughs> bacon is delicious. Um, this looks like a Chick-fil-A chicken, doesn't it? Kind of, sort of. <laughs> Kind of, sort of. So, and let's see. So, yeah, hopefully we can find someone because it would be good to continue filming those meetings. But I can tell you we'll definitely be at the next one. We'll be at the next one. That's for sure. Yeah. But after that, we're going to be in Alaska for a few months. So, and believe me, I'm not messing up with yeah. those plans to be at a town hall meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so... As much fun as they are, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. And then somebody said, will Don become more reasonable without Russell? Um, does he just act that way because Russell's there? And we can answer that oh. question with our opinions and speculate different things. I do think he would be more reasonable without Russell there because I can tell Russell's completely controlling him. And it's really sad because if you noticed at the meeting where they're walking out, Russell's like standing there with his leash. Come on, Don, let's go. Like yanking him over. Come on, it's time to go. <laughs> and then even when he was outside, he's like, we got to get Don out of there. So it's just shameful behavior. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's all a game to them. You see the way he's getting manipulated and it's it's kind of sad what's going on i know a lot of people are like it's so funny and to see what's going you, on Jenny. and this and that well it's really sad so i don't i i can only keep hoping and praying about the situation and that's what i will do there's some people in alaska in the chat i want to just say hey to you guys um i lived up there a number of years up near north pole and we're we're going up there. We're going to do the triangle. We're going to hit Fairbanks first, um, then come down and toward Anchorage and probably Seward. Uh, I don't know if we'll do Valdez on that. We'll see what the weather's doing and what timeline we're on. But um, there was a, a chat member said something about Maldoon Road in Anchorage. I've been there. I know where that's at. Um, howdy to you. We're coming your way. Continue I'm very on. excited about <laughs> that. I can't wait till I'm in that hole zone and it'll be fun it's 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 pretty yeah. as pretty as this is i prefer mountains and rivers and creeks and lakes and stuff like that. i prefer different terrain features than just water yeah the water is great i get it um but well i want to see something different because i grew up in florida and we used to come down to the keys just about every weekend and go fishing and i loved it i absolutely love the keys 
I love the beaches too, but I'm ready to see some mountains. I'm ready yeah. to see something different. So I'm like, completely stoked about it. I like cooler weather. So, uh, yeah, and I would love some cooler <laughs> weather. Like living in Florida, I always dreamed of being a snowbird. <laughs> that was my biggest thing. When I grow up, I want to be a snowbird <laughs> because the summers here are brutal. Absolutely mm. brutal. I mean, they have that saying, swamp butt for a reason. Yeah. Because during the summer, you're just standing outside and you're, you're doing sweating, nothing you're and you got nothing. sweat rolling down that's not, your back. That's not fun. And it's just not fun. So I am completely excited. So. Someone said Fort Wainwright, Alaska. I was there twice. <laughs> Sweet. Then someone wanted to know, lots of people want to know, has, does John Cook even attend the meetings? While I was mayor, he was at no meetings. I did not see him at the meetings. Um, before I was mayor, he didn't even attend the meetings. When we, he first moved into town, he was attending the meetings. There was, he was, uh, most people said he was drunk at the meetings. And that there was one or two occasions that there was a big argument outside of the meeting where he was involved. So it was causing a lot of static. So he quit attending the meetings and then Lynette was attending in his place, but then she wasn't coming to all the meetings either. So that's just more ludicrous that he was making all these complaints. He's not even attending. He's Someone said, do you know the Summers? We don't know them, but we've seen like, some of their videos. We're just thinking of reaching out to them. They're a pretty big YouTube Yeah, they're family, a big channel. And they're pretty busy. Um, yeah, the, so we haven't those, bothered. With those little kids. Yeah but, yeah, but if they happen to watch us and catch us, give us a shout. Yeah, we definitely would love to talk to them. I'm sure they've got a lot of insight. On... they got kids, and he works up on the slope. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, they're busy with the kids. you got all those activities. My goodness. Now, another question people had is, why did Don and Russell question the new attorney? Or why do they question the new attorney about everything? But they always accepted Mr. Warm's recommendations with no question. They absolutely never questioned yeah. him. So I think that's a pretty easy one to answer. Yes. Because the, as Jeremy says, birds of a feather flock, flock together. together. So they have a problem with somebody who's coming in there and doing things right. I'm pretty sure they also have a problem with women coming in there and being Would that strong. Be attorney worm? Is that attorney worm? So I think that's another reason is because it's a strong woman who's doing the right thing. Which is also pretty funny because Russell kind of rallied for her to be in there. And now all of a sudden he's got a big problem with her. <laughs> so, and someone, I see someone who was else asking if we've reached out to George George. Yes, we yep. do talk to George George and um, Honey on occasion. They are super busy too yeah. because they have all those kids, all the kids and they're doing all those activities. But yeah, we do. Um, try to catch their videos as well when we can and send them, well, Brett talks to George George and um, keep in touch with them. Everybody's pretty busy, but we love checking in on all our good friends. So, and they are good people, so watch their videos and support them as well. Thank you, Hugh. Um, and another question was, in the 6,000 emails, did you read about Russell's romantic encounters? So, I have to Ooh. tell you, in the 6,000 emails, I have not read all those emails. The yeah. attorney provided all those emails to Jeremy's attorney. Yeah. I did not go in there and extract all those. Now, I read a lot of emails um, that came from Mary, so much inappropriate behaviors mm -hmm. from Mr. Warm, from Mary. They were spending a lot of town dollars chatting back and forth. Right. And I'm pretty sure Attorney Worm was yeah. ticking that calculator. It's definitely not professional behavior Very by any means. But I will tell you, Russell is 
pretty smart in the respect that he stays away from technology. Mm -hmm. You've seen him say he doesn't do email. Well, believe me, he reads emails yeah. and he does emails, but he tries not to email uh, for the longest time. He had a flip phone. So if somebody texts him something, he's not going to reply because he doesn't want to put anything out there in print. Yeah. When so, I was the maintenance guy working with him, um, I would text him something and he would just say, you know, come over here at a certain time or I'll swing by at a certain time. He would do it in person. He didn't like to text. Yeah, because he and doesn't want why. anybody having any proof, right. which is probably why he's gotten away with the things he's gotten away with for so long. Mm -hmm. He's just he's just this much smarter than Mary Mary, that's all. But... <laughs> You know, and for whatever reason, he certainly has a lot of people that are loyal with his secrets. But as you've seen, nobody stays loyal forever. Nope. You're going to cross somebody and people are going to start talking about the things that you're doing wrong. So he must have a lot of dirt on people or something. I don't know, because a lot of people have asked that too, is... What kind of dirt does he have on the Strongs? And what kind of dirt does he... I have no idea. So I am I would hate to think that all these people are doing all this stuff with him. But, you know, I don't, I don't think know. there was anything romantic with him in those emails. There's probably more like things that were disgusting. Yeah, you know, the uh, adult... Roma romanticism has more of a positive tone to it. <laughs> I was just trying to be nice in my wording, but... It's really, ew, gross. You know, pukey faces. What so. else you got there, Madam Mayor? Oh, so many things. <laughs> People are also questioning a lot about Russell being investigated. And if mm. Jeremy was lying about that. No, Jeremy was not lying. Jeremy's got the receipts. I don't know when everybody's going to realize this, but Jeremy's <laughs> not on here telling lies about things happening. Yeah. Russell is being investigated. Just because you haven't heard the outcome of the investigation does not mean it's not happening. Right. The state is very lengthy in the time it takes Thank you, Leanne. to actually make decisions and do anything. You have seen that before. Buckle up. You have completely seen that before, that everything takes so much time. It's ridiculous how much time it takes. I understand it's frustrating. I'm frustrated with the whole process as well. But there is no lies. He's getting investigated. Um, I can't tell you why his is taking so long or whether mine is longer or whose is longer. I don't know the ins and outs of what's happening behind the scenes with the state. And I'm also not in the town hall office anymore, so I don't know where different investigations lie. Is it lie. safe to say that they're on Tallahassee time? I guess so. <laughs> Is that like island time? It's, it's worse than island time, and there's nothing relaxing about it whatsoever. Mm. But it's just shameful that everything takes so long, and a lot Thanks, of people Frankie. want to know why he's not in jail yet. I don't know. I don't know why it's taking them so long. I can tell you, in my opinion, why I think some things have taken longer or why different complaints against Russell throughout the years have been thrown to the side. And it's the good old boy system. Yeah, it's a lack it's a, of he has also, he has family members on the commission. Those commissioners talk to other people in the state, so they all have this relationship like mm -hmm. this. So I do believe, in my opinion, that he has gotten his family members to vouch for him, possibly covering different things up, telling other ones, eh, hey, don't worry about that, look the other, look way. the other way. And those are my opinions. There's a lot of that going on. But And I've heard a lot of different people say, hey, I've lived in that area a long time. I can tell you that's absolutely what's been happening. Mm -hmm. So... Apparently, it's not just my opinion. And, and I had heard some of this in the campground when I had been there, and I hadn't been there four or five months yet. So there are people that talk, you know, there are people that talk to you and be like, 
you know, well, that's the good old boy system. Yep, and unfortunately, and that's how so many names. things work. Some of them are still working in the county, and they're good people, but they realize what yep. they're working there, with. There are a lot of good people, and it's shameful yeah. that they have to work amongst these people that are doing the wrong things, and their jobs are on the line if they do or say something. The same things have happened even like in Otter Creek when Brett was the maintenance man. Mm -hmm. You know, he's not going along with the things Russell does, or, or things like that so all of a sudden Russell comes in who's not even the mayor anymore right at that time Laura, Laura Mott was, was the, the mayor. mayor Russell comes in and says I'm cutting your hours down to so and such a week and give me all those keys you're not allowed to enter the building anymore so, so I Russell went home, I grabbed no, the keys didn't we go home well first, first of all I was sitting right there and I was a little ticked off at the way Russell was speaking to you, mm -hmm. he didn't have the right to speak to you in that manner. Right. If um, an employee, the maintenance man, or anything like that in the town is going to be dealt with, the mayor has the power to suspend that person. Right. So, And then at the next board meeting, it would get voted on with the board members. So at that time, the only person who had the right to come to you to say anything would have been Laura Mott. But we all know who was running the show, especially by that encounter. Russell mm -hmm. was still running the show, and, and Laura, Laura was just a quit. puppet. She didn't want me to quit. Well, she didn't do anything about she it. She didn't do anything about it. So, inaction is action. Right. So, so I went he, home, came, I got the he came saying oh. these things, and he had no right to do that. She should have been the one. So, I'm sitting right there, and Brett was walking away from... Russell and he's like, okay, whatever. And I said, oh, no, no. I said, you go right back to him and tell him he can take this job and shove it. Yeah. Because we're not playing these games. I am not about the good old boy system and I'm not about all the games. Yeah. So we went home and he got the keys and that was that. So if you don't go along with whatever they want you to do, your job is on the line. They're going to mess with your water. So I understand in a respect why some of these people go along with the different things or look the other way. But I couldn't do that. I wouldn't do yeah. that. And the power, again, is with the numbers. So yes. if everybody stood together and did the right thing, he you would wouldn't be, have those he'd be problems. This big. Yeah, he'd be so, this and big. I, I just... it kills me but when the townspeople look the other way and ignore it it makes him feel this yeah big. it kills me that it people don't him. understand that little concept of people getting together yep. doing the right thing power is in numbers and you know you can't keep everything in the dark but you have to speak up right. you absolutely have to speak up and do the right thing so where was I now? I got on my little tangent. <laughs> <laughs> so another question people had is why these different parties, John Cook, Lynette, and Russell, why don't they want the town to be unincorporated? Is it just because their turtle scam won't be continuing? Is it because on Russell's part, then he can't hold the water over people's heads, that he can't get whatever adult favors he wants it's all about power when russell's in power he doesn't want to unincorporate when yeah that's not true in power, because he actually tried to get the town you, unincorporated Dash. over 10 years yeah. prior donna spoke about and i it forget too. who was in control at the time he was not in control at that time it was probably clea um so he tried to unincorporate and put a big petition around the town as everybody saw in the meeting Don put a motion to unincorporate right. so if they're not getting their way then they want to unincorporate right. so it's all about their power um, but you've been in power and you've been not in power right and we have always said the same thing the town would be better off if it unincorporated. Right, because and you wouldn't have all that being, fighting, and then you'd be able to have the code enforcement. You get the code you'd enforcement. Be able That's to the have biggest thing. You get the code enforcement. You the get, animal you get control. Animal control. Your taxes would go down for a majority of the people. I don't see what the problem with any of that is. The taxes was almost... It would go down, but it's very insignificant. Like, it's it's this much. Like, 80, 90% of the people would go down... 
this much, but they're I've only even, paying this much anyway. I've even read different people's comments where they lived in a town that got unincorporated and things are so much better so much now. Better. So, you know, it's just them not wanting. And the reason I'm sure that John and Lynette don't want the unincorporation is because you're not allowed in the county to have this animal sanctuary or whatever you want to call that mm -hmm. um, with around neighbors and so yeah they could not scam people for money using turtles here's the thing i don't tortoises. think i don't think the town being incorporated or unincorporated would affect immediately her turtle sanctuary because there has to be enforcement and there has to be willing enforcement so right now the town has no code enforcement it never has Hopefully well the county would the have future. the county on, would have finish. to enforce it so the county would then have to enforce it and the county has been complacent on enforcing their own policies as well. They pick and choose which ones they want to enforce. Well, it's like everything else. I now, just wanted it? to say that. Yeah. So the town being incorporated or not incorporated would not immediately affect the turtle sanctuary until enough people said, hey, county, we're unincorporated. You should be coming in here and doing this and making a scene of it the loudest, the squeaky wheel gets the oil, in other words. If there was enough noise about it, thank you, Jangren, then there would be something done about it, and the county would come in. They'd be forced to come in, or they'd have a black But the guy. reason they don't That's want it why. done is for their own selfish reasons. That's They're not, right. again, looking at the big picture yep. and putting everybody else first and foremost. When I look at things, I'm not going to just say, oh, well, this works out great for me. Who cares about everybody else? That's not how I look at things. I'm like, okay, well, of course I consider myself, I'm part of the group. So I consider myself as well as everybody else. And if I'm the only one who's going to benefit, then I need it to be good for the whole picture. Now, the, let me talk about the water quality. The water quality, whether the town is incorporated or unincorporated, I don't think would change at all. Because Lonnie does the water treatment plant. Okay, Lonnie also um, serves on other townships that are not incorporated and does their water. So he would just be paid by somebody else. So Lonnie would still do the water treatment plant just as he does now, but instead of being paid by Otter Creek, he would be paid by, let's say, Bronson or the county that would then pay him. Right, you'd have the same people he in would, there treating the stuff. The same people are still treating the water. It's just the money would flow in a different What's direction. What's going to change the water is that pipeline coming through. The pipeline through. is a great thing for Otter Creek. So that, that's what's going to change the but water. But you have other municipalities that are going to be affected by the pipeline as well. Cedar Key and Otter Creek are the only incorporated townships in that pipeline venue. Yeah. But you have unincorporated towns Rosewood, that are going to be positively affected Sumner. too. Rosewood, Sumner, um, outlying areas of Cedar Key before you actually get into Cedar Key. And eventually, if they could run that pipeline down 19, Yankee Town, they have water problems there. I mean, there's a lot of people who need good water. Mm -hmm. And I know there was a lady at the Levy County meeting who was saying that the county shouldn't get involved in this. And they're going to take on this burden. And, I mean, it's just terrible to think that people think other people are not entitled to have good water. So That should be the only thing they really... I mean, people go on missions to other countries to provide good water for people. Why can't we even get that here in our country? Yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> in, a, in a state that's full of water. We can't find good water. It's terrible that We can put a man on the moon, but we can't find good water in Florida. Don't focus on what's, what's important. And I think everybody should have good water. So, I don't know. I, I disagreed yeah, with some of the commentary there. But, again, not everybody agrees on everything. But it's just nice if people can come to the table and at least have a discussion like adults. So I, I believe, now correct me, I think Yankee Town is unincorporated and right next to it is Inglis and they are incorporated. Yankee Town's not unincorporated. They're not unincorporated? No. Okay. Um, another question people have is, do you think things will ever improve in Otter Creek or did Jeremy just put himself out there for no reason? I think they will improve. It will take 
time. Yes, I think I absolutely think they will improve. But yes, it's going to take time. It's going to take quite a bit of time. Nothing mm -hmm. happens that fast. I know we live in a world where everybody wants instant gratification. Right. People get sick of each other. Everything's disposable. It's a terrible mindset to have. Uh, the attention span of everybody is so small now. Technology and phones and everything have made those things worse. But, you know, you just got to hang in there. Things will take some time. Just don't get... You got to have faith. And you just got to yeah. keep... You got to keep trucking. You gotta keep keep trucking towards the good. Keep doing what you're doing. Don't let things frustrate you so much that you just quit. And you can't let people get to you. You got to refresh yourself constantly. I know mm -hmm. things can weigh you down at different times. But you got to keep praying. You got to keep talking to God. You got to surround yourself with good people and keep building each other up. And just keep going in the forward motion. Good things will happen. It just takes some time. I know a lot of people also are asking why I'm no longer mayor if I was cleared from these ethical um, accusations. And that was not Did anything it? having yeah. to do with me not being mayor anymore. The reason, again, for the people who didn't know, the reason I resigned was because of the Form 6 and how intrusive it is mm -hmm. so that has nothing to do with the ethics so no. I hope that clears that up again the reason I'm not the mayor of the town anymore is purely because of the form six and if you went January 1st into still being on the board you were required to fill out the form six Correct. so I was not putting all my information like that out online and that's the reason. Yeah. I hope they cleared that up for some people. Almost 200 other um, municipal council people also stepped down. Across and several the state. counties and small towns sued the state, and the state kind of reversed on that. And then they decided municipalities under 500 people would be exempt. Now, I haven't been able to find that in writing, but that's what I'm hearing, that's right. what I'm reading. But I have to find that on the website. Thank and you, I know Jax. there's a lot of people still asking again, you know, yeah. because Russell didn't fill out the form six, is he still allowed to be on the board? And again, he had until he has until July first to fill that out. Mm -hmm. um, the people that enforce that is also the ethics commission. Ethics commission now so the that. local towns do not enforce that. The supervisor used to be the of elections. elections does not it used enforce to be the, that. The supervisor of elections used to monitor that. Now it's been transferred they to monitor the ethics. It when it was a form one. Yes. Um, yeah. So, again, there's a lot of things that have to happen. Nothing is timely. So, he has not been required to file it until July 1st. So, they can't just throw him off the board. And if they did ever decide, you know, that would probably take longer than the term anyway to actually do anything. Now, I do want to say this April board could be interesting because Russell has tried to sit. Oh, the meeting? Yeah, the meeting. Um, Russell has tried to sit his people on, absolutely refused to sit. Zim's two people on the board, the one year term seat people. And now we're at April. It's childish games. It's childish. So the process of the board, it should be, it convenes with the current board members, the three. Those three have to sit, start the meeting, approve the minutes, get into new business, then position the people. So if they, anybody walks out before all that happens, no one gets seated. Yeah, I that mean, it's shameful, crazy. and it's I don't shameful. think he should, they should be able to keep playing these games, but again... The governor is the one who controls yep. who they can take off the board. Yep. So even if they keep walking out of the meetings, um, well, I mean, past the April meeting, though, they don't have seats. So they can't be sitting at the table anymore. So once it's time for the meet new people to come in, they have nothing to say about anything. So someone asked, did Don turn in uh, Form 6? Yes, he was one of the qualifying members. Yeah, he had so to to all qualify. All of the people during the qualification week going into the election, they had to do a Form 6. Yes, absolutely. Otherwise, they would have so not Zim been able to qualify. So have done one. Actually, Zim's not up. So he, he'll ha Zim has till July. 
because he's a current board member, but he didn't requalify. So the requalifying people that are currently on a board is only Don. Yeah. So, and also people wanted to know if Otter Creek spent any money on the town attorney to address, address my ethics complaints against me. No, that has nothing to do with the town. The town did not spend any money for a lawyer for me that when you have a complaint filed against you that is for you to deal with if you want to hire an attorney you do so out of your own pocket so no money was spent from the town of otter creek for that um and another thing people have been wanting to know is regarding mental health i know there's been a few people that are upset because when we're talking about John Cook and Lynette, a lot of people, the mental status comes into question. And there's a lot of people that don't want to be lumped up in that group. And I understand what they're saying. And there's many different levels of mental states. And when you go get counseling, I know a lot of people are ashamed of that and they don't want to be called mental and they don't want to get therapies because they don't want to be labeled in a way right. and in my opinion there's nothing to be ashamed of if you need help go get counseling there's nothing to be ashamed of I think everybody can benefit from receiving counseling everybody goes through things at times that they're not able to deal with Thank you, Stats. Correctly. And they're just, they're not in the right frame and they need to hear from other people. I mean, sometimes you sit in a therapist's office and you're just talking and you hear what you're saying and you can figure it all out just listening to yourself and they don't even necessarily have to tell you anything. But it's just good to have someone to talk to. Yeah that can tell you things. Now, there are some people that have mental problems that are on a different level where they need to be medicated. There's um, chemical imbalances. There's so many things these days. You have chemicals in the food, chemicals in the air. So if somebody has an imbalance and they're eating different foods that are adding to it, they might need to be on different medications. That just it how it works it's a fact of life and that doesn't mean we shouldn't talk about it right i mean nobody's making fun of people for their mental problems but you have to address the mental problems you need to be able to talk about that i mean to be honest with you i in the past have told lynette that she should go talk to somebody and get counseling i was trying to help her by telling her this I've told her before that I've gone for counseling. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Lots of people do it, and some people don't do it that should do it. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I think everybody would benefit from it. It's sad that mental health care is so expensive, and I do believe the government should have better programs for mental health. That is one of the things where we fall short big time in this country and I think we'd have a lot less problems when you're looking at the big picture of things if they would spend some money on that and you'd have a lot less problems I mean even in the jails the jails are full of people that have mental health problems and the jails are not even equipped to worse. handle the environment that, that environment the, makes, the environment it makes it worse the yeah. people need medication they need special care it's 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 completely terrible. So I don't want people to Thanks, think for the two. that that is what hap is happening is that people are getting made fun of because of mental health problems. Yeah, Absolutely not. But in, not nice. you do need to be able to talk about these things. It's a serious problem going on in our world and it's increasing. I would hope that we could have more solutions come out with funding for mental health care. So... A, no one should be lumped into that same category and nobody's like attacking people but it is very hard too when you're living amongst people thank who you Cindy just refuse to go get the help that they need and now you have to deal with that person and you're not equipped 
to deal with the mental health of this person. And some people are dangerous. They don't deal with the problems they have, and now it's become dangerous. So it's dangerous to the people around them. Well, nobody's taking into account these people. How do they deal with that? So they're just feeling sorry for the people that have the mental health problem. But there's also people who have to deal with it, and it's also a chain reaction. Now, the people having to deal with them are having mental health problems because of dealing with it. So all in all, I just wish there was better programs, better funding. It's not something to be embarrassed about. Talking to professionals will help you in the long run. So I think it is good to go get therapy. Mm -hmm. So I do not make fun of people for mental health problems. I just encourage them to get help. Thanks, Mike. I want to talk something real quick. Um, Lynette was really jumping at a lot of people and accusing us too of calling Child Protective Services. She should not have gotten so angry about that, whether it happened or not. And I'll tell you right now the truth, um, and I've been saying the truth, we never did contact Children's Services. Sure, and the only reason probably should have. We probably should have. No, because... The reason we didn't is because we already knew so many other people already have. Right, so, so why would we, why would we overburden just pile the on? system? We didn't want to just pile on. So, um, but why would she get mad about that? Okay, so if I have a child and people are calling because they suspect some abuse to the child, then I should be willing to be, oh, okay, let's schedule an appointment. Let's get those people in. And let's you mean transparency? Transparency. Because mm -hmm. what was Russell doing on the board? Did I get upset and, and ticked off because he went, and called water management on an RV park on some uh, assumptions that I was building something in a wetland. I knew what I had. I in, I called water. Well, I think the only thing I, upsetting about speak. that. Well, I called I just water say, management. Hold on to it. I'll let you speak. I'll forget it. When 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 I called water management and we set up an appointment and they came out, I wanted them to see what it was that Russell was complaining about. Go ahead. I was just saying I get upset about the money wasted on the false calls. Yes. Well, That's yes. the only thing that upsets me. But if you have nothing to hide mm -hmm. and nothing's wrong, then why are you getting all upset? Then why are you getting upset? So why is Lynette getting upset about people calling DCS? If she has nothing to hide, why is she upset that fish and wildlife are getting called? If you have nothing to hide, in fact, you should be like, oh, I can't wait for fish and wildlife to come. I want to show them my setup. Right? You might Maybe learn, they have some tips. Maybe I can learn new. something. Right. I personally was excited for water management to come out because one, I didn't, I knew I wasn't going to be in any trouble. Two, I had, I had some questions for them. While you're here, what can I do about this? While you're here, can I do that? Can I do this? As I've always said, I think the agency should be encouraging the people mm -hmm. and the people should be receptive because everything's a learning experience mm -hmm. and. Everybody should be helping each other grow. The agencies should be guiding you. Guiding you. And you know what? what? They guided were. growth. That was what I liked um, in the town is you have to have growth, but it should be guided growth. Guided growth. So, you know, all these agencies should be working together to make everything better, whether it be your town, your country, relationships. You know, you should be working for the better, not trying to... You know, and there's a video on the Spotlight of Otter Creek page of all the meetings in the last year, year and a half or so. They're all posted there. Um, if well, I can't say it's that. It's a private group, so just not anyone can join anymore because we were just getting some stupid people trying to get on there and stuff. But all the videos of all the meetings are on there. And I asked Russell during one of the meetings where he was mayor, I was nobody, if nothing was found if no if there was nothing wrong and i had certain guidelines to follow and i was within those guidelines why was my permit being revoked and why can't it be reinstated what did he say sue us that's what he did he leaned back in his chair and said sue us well that's what he would do at any meeting if you yeah. had any comments or shut questions he's shutting the meeting down he, meeting he adjourned. The meeting, meeting adjourned meeting he ain't adjourned. explaining nothing he to nobody explain nothing. so that's someone who has... Your plumber called me personally. <laughs> he had something to hide. 
Um, another thing was people want to know, what is our opinion of Judge DeThomasis? Uh. So, in my opinion, he is not doing the right things. He is not there for the right reasons. I mean, it's so hard <laughs> to sit in there and listen to this man. He makes no sense. The judge's um, number one... He's completely biased. His number one job is to sit there and listen. To both parties. To both sides. Impartially. And then adjudicate. Not adjudicate one side and tell I, them how they I can't they even proceed. understand his bias. Like, his bias doesn't even make any sense. I don't think his behavior should even have had to rise to this level. So, I think the governor's office should have went in there and unsat him immediately. I personally think he should not only be removed from this case, but he should be removed from the bench. Yes. Because if this is how he if operates, how act, then he should not be in that position. He's doing a lot of injustice. And that is my opinion of him. Yeah. So, it's hard to even call him by his name anymore. I always yeah. want to say all, judge all, DeBiases. All I see is DeBiases, DeBiases. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then someone asked, will we be parking in Zim's new RV park when it is done? And... We do not plan on putting permanent routes anywhere, but when we are in town for Christmas and the Creek, it's a possibility that yeah. we'll be staying in Zim's Park. It's a possibility that we'll be staying in Shady Oaks Campground. Who knows? Again, yeah. I don't have a crystal ball, but we will absolutely be back to Otter Creek yeah. for Christmas in the Creek. Christmas and the creek. who knows whatever time we decide to stop in that town. So we could very well possibly be either at Zim's or at Shady Oaks. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. So everyone will see when that happens. And if it does, we'll make a video and let you know. So <laughs> stay tuned. <laughs> um, what's another one? Why has Russell not faced any consequences for his actions? I think we addressed that yeah. mostly. Um, that, again, I think he's gotten away with things for a long time just because of the relations, the good old boy system, who he's connected to. And you have to prove things. And that I do believe people's heads have gotten a lot bigger because nothing has happened to them. Mm -hmm. So it would be great if things would happen and people would be held accountable for their actions. Um, what can be done about council members walking out of the meetings? Again, that's something that the governor would have to address. I think it's terrible that they're playing childish games. I think the citizens need to take note of what people are doing. I think they need to keep that in mind during elections. And also, they should also think about running for the board. I know a lot of people in the town said that they don't have time to be on the board. Some people have even made the comment they don't feel they're smart enough to be on the board. And I think nonsense. that's ridiculous. That's I said there's some very good people in that town. There is. Smart people. It doesn't yeah. take that much out of your time. So if the people that are running aren't good enough and they're not who you'd vote for, then run. Be a part of the town, speak up for the town, and do the right thing. You do not have to vote for bad people. Right. But you need to pay attention to what's going on. And when people don't even attend meetings, when they're not part of the board, that speaks volumes to me. Yeah. So, Someone had asked, a, a couple people asked what Zim's full-time job is. He's a he's a contractor. Yeah, so he, he's he builds a contractor. And trains homes. He's a contractor. So he definitely knows how to do the right things with building. All building, his permits, he understands permits are on board. He understands all that stuff. So he's, he's a, a very great, knowledgeable great guy. He's very board. generous. Yeah. So, and there will be inspectors inspecting his permits. So everything is being done the right knows. way. He's on the up and up. So, and it's just terrible that so many people are nosing around, looking in for something wrong to be done. But again, like I think we stated before, there's other people in that town that are doing things, taking down buildings and whatnot, and nobody's saying boo about them. Why is that? Yeah. So, something funny going on there. 
Um, what can, oh wait, do we use any RV memberships? We currently do not. I've looked into one or two, um, but they're, they're kind of pricey and I don't know that the savings um, justify the prices just yet. It would take some more investigating. Yeah, we'd have to look uh, more into that. And I think mm -hmm. too, a lot of what we're doing right now is we're gonna be staying on different bases mm -hmm. and checking those things out and those memberships wouldn't be helpful for the bases at all. Yeah. I but like the bases. I in like the future, the we'll definitely look into that. And you know, we always look forward to people's tips on different things. People tell us what mm -hmm. memberships they think are good. Mm -hmm. And what would be good to check out? I know people have given us lots of great ideas. I have yeah. a lot of research notes. Mm -hmm. I like to make lists. So I have lots of lists of things. So if you have any good tips, let me know. Everybody knows our email address is madammayorsadventures at gmail.com. Yep. If you ever have anything you want to drop us a line just shoot us an email and That's we'll the best way to contact try us. to get back to you as fast as we can. Thank you, Skipper. Um, someone who was asking to about Zim's term and what is Zim right now. Zim is the acting mayor in the pre in the absence of the mayor. When I stepped down, him being vice mayor stepped into the position of mayor, and his term will go until April of 2025 election because mm -hmm. he had the two-year term. He's done one year of his two-year so, term. And mm -hmm. they will vote on a new mayor at the meeting in April. April. So the mayor is only one year. While the terms are two years, the mayor has the possibility of changing every year. Yeah. So someone's right now asking if Zim would be the next mayor. So when they vote in April, they could very well vote for Zim to be the next mayor. There's no term limits, so to speak, on how many times you can be the mayor. Right. So, but it just, somebody, there's a new opportunity presented. Every year the mayor year gets re-voted on. For the mayor and vice mayor. The so, yeah. there will be a new opportunity for a different one. It could very well be Zim, in my opinion. It should be Zim. Yeah, he is the most knowledgeable the most for the knowledgeable. position. And he has been on the board before. So, and Zim does get to vote. There's five people. He's one of the five, so he has to vote a tie. So, um, people want to know how long will we will we travel? Um, there's no set time. We kind of have ten years in the back of our mind if this trailer will last that long. <laughs> um, we definitely Gentle. are going to travel into the new administration and hope that property values come down because it's a seller's market it is not a buyer's market right now so we're willing to wait it out until it's a buyer's I market. I mean I want to get a homestead before we do 10 get a years. Home... Yeah, yes. But that being said not like some huge house that we're going to yeah. go live in. It's not going to be right now. I'd like to get a nice little homestead that we can park a few months out of the year possibility. Mm -hmm. Possibly. I can't speak. Like a place to reset. Right. And um, I don't know where that'll be. We'll be looking around as we travel. Mm -hmm. I do love Tennessee. We like Tennessee as an option. So we'll see, though. When we travel around, we'll just see mm -hmm. what we like. We'll see what we come across. And how the prices are. <laughs> Maybe we'll run into somebody that knows somebody that has some property that's, oh, that's perfect. Yeah. Um, I wanted to, I put in some notes there at the end. I wanted to say, I don't know if uh, you're in the chat, but the umbrella guy, we look for contact information to try to reach out to you. I haven't been able to find your email, so if you anybody email. knows, If anybody knows his email, you can drop it, or you can go ahead and email us at madammayorsadventures at gmail.com. Yep. Um, either way. Um, also wanted to let people know, I know there was some post, it was probably a couple weeks ago by now, where somebody was running a scam and they had copied our profile and they were putting a link to a realtor in every comment that was dropped on a community post. And just know that I will never send anybody a link 
promoting somebody. If I wanted to talk about somebody on a video or in a live, we'll I will. Do it right here. I'll do it right here. I will talk to you. I yeah. will never send you a link. We won't solicit you. For you anything. have to be aware of scammers. Don't ever click on links. And if you're ever wondering if this is true, reach out and ask, and I'll get back to Thank you, you and let you know. But even because nowadays everybody's scamming for everything, even in your emails, on your phone. Do not answer personal questions to anybody about anything. There's many scammers out there always looking to get your money. Don't fall for any of that. If it sounds too good to be true, it usually is. Always verify and check everything. Just don't immediately go clicking on everything but i will never put links in here to people I, if i wanted to promote somebody i would verbally tell you miss Hi, you deborah. too deborah and um so i just wanted to address that and another thing people were so tug lives in tennessee oh yeah. well maybe he's got some thank good you ideas. tracy thank you tracy um then people want to know what's our next adventure so right now we're in the keys for a couple of weeks yeah. after that i think when we head more north a little because we'll still be waiting on doctor's appointments um that are happening at the end of april i still want to try to get to saint augustine it's been so yeah. hard to get there so i'm not sure what we're going to fill in those couple of few weeks we're kind of just checking it out but yeah, maybe might, st might, augustine we might go back to we were trying to get into anastasia state park in st augustine but we might have to we we'll just mad. we'll just wait and check around and see what we can get into we're not really sure right now but that's one of the things we may possibly do while we're waiting camp blanding again wouldn't be a bad choice they're close in proximity maybe but most likely we'll just check out something new we might not that. really sure i mean there's a lot of ideas well somebody mentioned the air force base up in jacksonville i can't remember the name of it but we did a day trip there once yeah there's still so many different things um but yeah we'll be looking for a little fillers for the next couple of weeks after we get back from the keys and then after that we'll start making our way towards alaska so that's the next big adventure is alaska yeah alaska's gonna but, be a six month adventure you know what we do in the path along the way i'm not really sure yet of course we're gonna visit family i've got family to visit in ohio my sister my nieces and nephews mm -hmm. i haven't seen them in quite a while so i'm excited to go see them we're gonna stop in and see them we're stopping in virginia too for a week or so yeah gotta so go we'll be, we'll see some the family members yep gotta see some family members there and who knows where else we'll stop in on the way but yep. yep, that's the next big adventure. Would you like to treat the audience to a treat? Thank you, Mad. A treat? Yeah, I was going to maybe turn the camera around and let them see the view out our front porch. As we say goodbye. You want to do that? Would you guys like to see what's outside? I mean, we're in the Keys. I don't know. Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> Fort nice. Lickerdale. That's what we always called it growing up. Fort Lickerdale and Holly Weird. The Golden Keys. Or these are the Florida Keys. Key West. We might be looking for the Golden Key around here. Yes, yeah, so I'll tell you what we're going to do. It. This is kind of an impromptu. We're going to show you what's outside our door. 